Tell us how these little boats have come into being, these small boats. You said the word small boats, and I wonder how many times in recent months we are hearing this word, small boats. There is actually a very magical thing about the power of the small, the power of the scale, and the power of the many. I found that this is, I'm, I'm exploring this in my own work. So the small ones, they are small because we could hold them in our hands, but we are actually referring to an actual small boat that is referred to the tragedy of what is happening currently and ongoing crisis with, with refugees. I come from a family that Recycling is part of our everyday life. It is part of the way we think. So in my childhood, I was eating out of spoons. That is, they were once bombs. My uncle used to collect them, dismantle them, and make spoons out of them. You say recycle. Mm. But I feel there is something much stronger in this. Mm -hmm. It is transformation. Beautiful. Metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. It is actually creativity. Mm -hmm. You take something, you transform it into something else. You take something that is only known from use and you transform it into something that signifies. And that is the magic about actually not losing the old DNA, but actually celebrating its DNA and making a new voice. This is not only Mudguard, there is many other metaphors that is injected in this tiny small boat. The burnt matchsticks, but equally the resin, water-like bonding agency. It's actually a very ordinary object. When I give this talk in Cambridge, I warn everybody if they put their bicycle outside, they might go outside and don't find their mudguards. <laughs> the idea of the shape of it, being outdoors, being actually um, exposed to the elements, but the curvature, there's something really very beautiful about it. So it was so easy just to take it and just cut them and form them. And of course, my first attempt were not with mudguards. My first attempt were with lead itself. But actually, I thought lead is far too aggressive by sending the message too soon. I wanted this kind of contemplative quality. I want something much more colorful. So having the mud guards created that kind of color, exposure, being worn out. If you look at them, they are rusty. They are already patterned. They are already had their life. A journey. A journey and they are having a new journey. So this is part of the equation. The second one, I do lots of work with matches, but matches for me, they are not one thing, like anything else is just, they could be a number, which I did lots of tallies with the matchsticks, but equally they could represent people, but equally they could re represent bombs. I did lots of, in Kettle's yard, I did a performance called Strike, where I just burn matches. So the same element could take different meaning. It depends how it's used. So we have the mud guards, we have the matches, and now we have the resin. Because actually, I really wanted something to express that is in the time of difficulty, that is, we bond together. And the resin gave me that, that bonding mechanism. I think you all feel when you look at these boats that they speak to the fragility of human beings, to their being exposed, to their being um, without shelter, for them being together, but being endangered. Without this being ideologically charged art, you don't, you look at it, you don't feel it's a pro, you have a program, but you say something very clearly and very delicately. And that's something that um, 
that, that impressed me deeply. And that always impresses me when I look at them. That doesn't wane, it doesn't, it doesn't lessen. This is always there because what they refer to is human beings who are out there. On this note, actually, if I may say that is, we discussed that actually previously, we say that is, the metaphor is a boat. A boat is a metaphor. <laughs> Because the idea of the word metaphor is to carry over, to carry across, to carry yeah, over. Carry Maybe this is a good time for me to start thinking of revealing what, what we are hiding behind the, behind the books, if I may. Um, that is, you have to... Now, here it is. Here is an object, has its history, has its being, and how many hands and minds behind it. It's two million years of human creativity. I don't know if we can still call it a book. <laughs> Let's say this um, formally called a history of the world in a hundred objects was in itself obviously the fruit of the collaboration of many people across the museum and many people outside the museum who kindly agree to be interviewed and share ideas, comments, um, and interpretation. And I think it has opened up many discussions and many ideas about how we can address the question of what is human history? Um, how can we approach it? How can we embrace it? How can we find a path through it? And here, the, 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 the initial decision was, let's use objects to do that and look at how objects have today encapsulate that experience of human beings growing, developing, migrating across two million years. For somebody who's worked on books most of my life and loves books, it is terrible to see somebody drill a hole through a book. You know, that's violent. That's a brutal act. And you can even see the, um, the traces of the heat. You know, there's some traces of, of, of burning. And when Isam showed me that book. Again, like with the boats, I thought, of course, yes. That's exactly it. You, you, you perpetrate an act of violence on that book. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I thought of this one, I thought, actually, um, you need to go through this history because migration is not a current one, is not an issue of now only. It goes back not only two million years. If you look at the whole migration of cells that makes us humans or nature, that is, it goes much more than that. So on this note, I just would like to now bring my boat and put it as part of my intervention. Now this for me is not anymore a book and it's not anymore a boat. They are starting to speak of new metaphors. The book itself becomes a boat. The book itself becomes a nest. What do you call it? I call it precarious passage. And actually, it is very unusual for me to write the title in the object itself. So the title now is in the back. I don't know how many of you passed through, maybe now with the Brexit, we all have to be stamped with our passport. But it depends what passports you have. Some bar, sometimes you are stamped friendly or with not very friendly looks. So I, the, the idea of actually being stamped in itself is a performance by stamping this, this book. You had a conversation 
um, not so long ago mm -hmm. in uh, St. Martin's in the Field. And it was, among others, with, with Ruth Padell and um, Lucy Winkin and um, Neil McGregor. Mm -hmm. And each of you would speak, um, go um, share thoughts, and you had brought boats with you and put them in front of you on a pedestal. And the first question you received from the audience was, what gives you hope? And it was addressed to you. And you got up, you stepped up to the microphone and said nothing. You said nothing. You remained silent for a long time. And I remember that. It's been burned into my memory. And then you just made a gesture um, to the boats in front of you and said, I send those out into the world. And that has remained with me. It is the, the artist assuming through his work and in his means responsibility. Beautiful. I think. As an artist, you're deliberately uh, a provocateur here. So, you know, you said that the role of the artist is to get us to ask questions. What are what what are you what are the questions that we should be asking here when you put it in dialogue with the British Museum? I wouldn't be able now to tell you the questions because it is seems to me um, time will tell what kind of questions this might throw. I don't know them. If I know them, I will not do the work. I will like to wait and see what kind of questions this might provoke. What I would like to say, on this note, if I may, um, I am actually going to address this, if you don't mind, not to you, but to, uh, to Hartwig. I would like to gift this object to the museum because I really feel that is in order for it to ask the questions, it needs to be seen. I'm very honored to accept it. Thank you, Sam. And we will show it. And we'll make sure that it can deploy its agency of defiance and questioning and perhaps also of some answers. Thank you very much.